This afternoon, I want to talk a little bit about BGP security and where we are. I think Alvaro might have said something earlier in the IETF update about closing the CIDR working group. Does that sound vaguely familiar to anybody? I don't know. But uh, he said something about that he was going to say something today about closing the CIDR working group. So here we are. I've been working on BGP for since 1998, 1999, 16, 17 years. And you know where we are today is exactly where we were in 1998 or 1999. We seem to have made rampant progress. So let's talk a little bit about where we are and um, some of the stuff you're going to know so you can take your nap while I'm doing it. But um, we're talking a little bit about where we are and some other things that uh, various people are working on. Uh, me being one of those people to try to get something going in this space, to actually deploy something that will work. Okay. Origin and path validation. Of course, we want to know who owns DB801-64. It would be entertaining to know this information. Um, we want to know how to resolve hijacking and spoofing. And so, you know, from my perspective, I'm an edge provider. I care about eyeballs, and I care about eyeballs getting to my website very quickly. So if people have hijacked my Anycast address space or something like that, it doesn't make me very happy. So this is a concern for me. So what we want to know is we want some way for AS65000 to know that AS65002 is the correct originator. Because what can actually happen here is AS65003 can just advertise the routes db 801 64 with this fake AS path of 65002, 65003. And so what we need is we need some sort of path validation. Not really sure what that looks like. Another problem is valley free routing. If you're a transit provider, I'm assuming at least some of you in this room are transit providers and IXs, you really care about valley free routing. I don't want AS65002 in this diagram to be able to re-advertise something learned from AS65000 as if it was locally originated or as if AS65002 is a transit. He's actually supposed to not be a transit, he's supposed to be a customer and therefore he's not supposed to be transiting route uh, traffic to um, DB801-64. But here the problem is AS65000 and 65,003 don't have an existing business relationship. There's no peering. And even if there were, there's no real way in any protocol or anything else today to allow AS the operator at AS65,000 to actually tell 65,003 that 65,002 is not transit. Um, again, lots of problems we've been dealing with. Um, Another problem we run into in this space that has actually made it very difficult to deploy BGP security of any kind is A65000 wants to be able to say, I only want to advertise 65003 if the routes, my connection to A65003, if A65003 is actually using me for transit right now. So this is the case of backup routes, things like that. There are other situations, um, for instance, 65,000 only wants its connection to 65,004 to advertise its pe to, to its peers and not to their peers. This would be true of regional routing, partnering relationships, things like this. There are cases where one transit provider will purchase another transit provider and they do not want anyone to actually know that the transaction has taken place, um, like in a more public way, or they don't want the topology to look like it has changed for some reason. So these types of things come up. Operational requirements. Whatever we do cannot replace the edge. Okay, I don't know if you know much about LinkedIn, but being an edge provider, we're not exactly swimming in money, but we're probably wealthier than most of the transit guys out there are right now. A lot of friends who work at Level 3 in Orange and NTT, and their budgets tend to be smaller than mine. And I can tell you that I cannot replace my edge routers. I can't afford to replace my edge peering. So I know that if I can't, there's absolutely no way that a transit's going to be able to afford to. Another thing that we run into is we don't want to tell people how to run their networks. We definitely do not want to slow down convergence. 
BGP convergence is already very slow, and um, we just want to be quiet. We don't want to advertise things where they don't need to be advertised, things like this. There are uh, problems in that area, and we don't want a single point of failure. My animation was upside down, huh? That happens from time to time. Okay, I'm just going to just zoom through the current solutions with just some analysis. I'm not going to explain how they work. If you don't know how some of these things work that I'm talking about, feel free to find me or email me, and um, I can point you at papers, or you can look at IETF drafts, or whatever you want to, to figure out how these work. Okay, RPKI, uh, I think LACNOG or LACNIC is probably the Latin American Caribbean region is probably the number one percentage deployed in RPKI right now, so I probably don't need to tell you anything about RPKI, but positive validation and data is out of band. That makes me very happy. Very low or no new information leakage, incremental deployments, very good, no edge replacement, and leaves BGP alone because it's out of band. Negative does not protect against the sort of man in the middle, so-called man in the middle, or one-off attacks. Um, this is extremely difficult to justify for transit providers. If you're a transit provider, there's very little incentive for you to deploy RPKI in any meaningful way. If you're on the edge, there's some pretty good justification, but there are a lot of concerns about business control over my business by an IR. If you are a transit provider, you do not want to accidentally forget to mail a check to your IR or your NIC and have your entire network taken off the internet uh, would not be a good thing.